we're headed to Nashville this morning, so Nashville, here we come. Hi everybody, it's Rachel from Vacation Rentals by Rachel coming to you today from Nashville, Tennessee where we are traveling for a conference for short-term rentals. So I'm hoping I can learn lots and pass that on to you guys as well. I wanna to talk today about how to get your listing up and going. So you've either purchased or inherited or turned your own home into a vacation rental and now you wanna know what to do next. Really, there are probably two main booking sites that I'd recommend you look into initially, Airbnb and VRBO or Verbo now they're called. Um, so those are the two I'm going to spend the most time on today. There are some other sites that are used as well. The, another common one is booking.com, but the last time I looked into that one, you had to have five properties to list on their site, so I don't utilize that one. Also, another option you might want to look into is either a direct booking site or your own personal website. Another option is hoofy.com, that's H-O-U-F-Y.com, which is a direct booking site that is free for you and for your guests. So you could look into creating an account with them as well. Let's start first with Airbnb. I really like their platform for its ease of use. It's fairly quick to set up your property once you have uh, your stuff done ahead of time. So I'll show you that here in just a few minutes. And VRBO, that one as well, is fairly easy to get started once you've drafted most of the statements that you want to include. So before you actually get ready to list your properties, I recommend that you have professional photos taken. And really this is pretty important that you use a photographer who has experience with real estate photography. The best ways to find someone are either asking uh, your real estate agent or agents in the area that you know or trust, or I found a great one on Facebook Marketplace in my most recent market. So that's another good option. And typically they can offer you different packages. Uh, you might be able to get the internal and external photos as well as sometimes drone photography, which can be really neat for future use, either for advertising or promotions, or um, even sometimes I use it on Facebook or Instagram for my uh, guest reviews, which is kind of fun. So definitely I recommend professional photos. And those should only run you about $200 to $300, depending on the type of package and your market that you select. Now, before you get ready to start writing your own description, I recommend that you pull up your market that you are going to be listing in and start looking at your competition. Really take a good look at their listing description. That's the bulk of the text that describes their property. And pay attention to what you find appealing in those listings start to take some notes and I usually recommend that you open up a Word document and start to write your own listing in a Word document where you can change it, edit it, copy and paste it into multiple listing sites. How about we go check out my examples? Let's take a look at Airbnb and Verbo and my property listings. We are gonna jump right into this, starting with my Airbnb profile page. So this is the home page. We're going to go to menu, then listings, and then we're going to explore the Ponderosa stay and play cabin. So the first thing that will come up at the top of the page is the photograph section, and you have the option to edit or review your photos. I recommend you start with a photo that grabs the attention of the potential guest at the top. Next, I recommend that you add your photos and include a little blurb underneath to describe what they're looking at and also to provide additional information. Let's go back. This is the section you're going to want to edit using a Word document and then you can copy and paste it to put it in these sections. A little bit below that you'll find the amenities section. This is easy to edit so as things are upgraded you can make changes. It's important that this is accurate, so review this frequently to make sure there haven't been any missed items. And I do recommend with some of the easier, smaller items that if you do not have it, that you work to try to obtain it. Now, some of these don't make sense in my setting or in our type of property, um, but hangers, for example, if you don't have those, you should add them. Let's go back to the main section. Now there's one other critical thing that I want to mention on this listing details page here under custom link. 
So initially your Airbnb page will come up with a series of numbers here and this is not very memorable at all. So this is your opportunity to go in and edit this and actually include the name of your vacation rental here. This is great for branding and to make it more memorable for your guests. You can share this on your Facebook page or in an email. So I really recommend that you do that right away and then you can copy and paste from this location. I want to go back to the next section now. Let's briefly touch on policies and rules. I get asked the question about instant booking quite a bit. This allows the guest to select your property and book it without contacting you first. I do think that that's an advantage. However, if you're going to do that, check out the settings here where you can make sure that you have someone that has already had approval from another host. So if they've never been reviewed by a host before, I recommend that they have to request to book for you. Another one you could select is the government issued ID. I've had trouble with that one in my market because it's not one that the guests often upload and so I was getting a lot of requests to book. If you go that route, it just means more people will be contacting you before they've actually secured your property. The other thing I wanted to touch on here under info for guests is the check-in and check-out time. This is something you are going to want to discuss with your cleaning crew based on how long it will take to clean your house and how many other turnovers they may be doing in the area on the same day. One of the mistakes that I made was I set my check-in time a little bit early and this really creates problems if there's ever a major cleaning disaster or something that breaks and you need the time to go in and have enough opportunity to try to fix it if you have a same day check-in. So please verify this information with your cleaning crew before you set it in stone. That's all today for the Airbnb information. Next, to compare to Verbo, I've pulled up my Verbo site and I've gone to the tab on the left that says property and selected edit property. And I've jumped directly to this screen to protect some of the guest names that are visible on my home page. So across the top you see some tabs here and I recommend that you start with the description section because this will look fairly similar to the Airbnb listing. Again, this is where I think you copy and paste your text that you've already spent the time writing into this section. If you scroll down a little further on this part, there is something different here compared to Airbnb where there's section for an owner's story and you can put as much or as little as you want. I put a little blurb about why we own property in the area. Back at the top, you'll see the Photos tab, which is very similar to the setup in Airbnb where you can upload your photos. And again, you can put the same photo captions in each one. So I typically set up my Airbnb listing first because it seems a little more intuitive to me. And then once that's up and running, then I build my Verbo listing a week or two later, depending on just on how much time that I have. Rooms and spaces, this is where you just break out more information about each individual space within the home. And another interesting section here is the video tab. This is unique to Verbo. Um, let me go to my other property here because the Ponderosa Stay and Play cabin does not have this, but the High Tide Escape does have a video tour. And so here's the YouTube URL. And so this actually shows a walkthrough video of your property. Airbnb does not allow for video uploads. So going back to Ponderosa Stay and Play Cabin, the other section at the end is virtual tours, but this is pretty specific how to do this. So it's not very easy to do that initially. Let's go back to the beginning here with amenities. This is just like Airbnb uh, with a few differences in terms of what they're asking for. But again, you have the opportunity to check a box if you have it or not, and then you can include a little bit of information. And I've always found that a little more information is helpful, but don't go overboard here because your guests are not even going to read all of this. So that's kind of the down and dirty with the Verbo listing. And of course, there's a lot more here, but really, if you just read the tabs and go through it, it's fairly easy to get it up and running. Let's recap what we just talked about. The most important thing is to just get started on building your listings. The easiest thing to do is start doing that in a Word document and then build your listings ahead of time. And you can do this before you even close on the property. While I've recommended that you get professional photos, certainly you can get pretty decent photos on an iPhone these days. So if that's what you need to initially get your listing up and running, then go ahead and do it. If you've already built a listing and you're reviewing this to see if there are any improvements you can make to your own listing, of course you can go in and update it after the fact. Refreshing your listing often, especially changing out the title, such as with seasonal changes, 
really helps with the algorithm of the listing site and helps keep your listing towards the top of the search results, which can help more guests find your property. Refreshing your listing often, especially changing out the title, such as with seasonal changes, really helps with the algorithm of the listing site and helps keep your listing towards the top of the search results, which can help more guests find your property. So we've covered a lot of different things today and it was really just an initial gloss over of a lot of the in-depth information that you can put into those listings. So thank you for watching today. Please make sure you subscribe my channel below and like this video so that I can keep working on making more of these free videos for you guys. Please come with me next week. We're headed to the beach condo and I'm going to delve into some specifics about design and also about some of the items that we use to stock our vacation rentals. Thanks again. See you next time.